My name is Marie Watt and I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm a citizen of the Seneca Nation of Indians in upstate and eastern, no, western, sorry, western New York. And uh, I am an artist. And one of the things that I enjoyed about being in New York uh, City was just knowing that Iroquois iron workers helped build Manhattan skyscrapers. And I've long had this kind of love of the word skywalker. And part of it is that that word, it's how uh, Iroquois people refer to our iron workers is as skywalkers. And I also really love as a kid who grew up uh, in the seventies and saw the very first uh, movie like of Star Wars in the theater. Uh, I love that that word Skywalker had this like double, double kind of cultural meaning for me. There was a community of iron workers in the 1950s that lived in the Gowanus area and they made up probably 15% of the uh, steel and iron um, construction workers. But then, and also uh, there was even a church in the neighborhood that would do like a monthly mass in the Mohawk language because there were so many Mohawk iron workers, which is kind of amazing to just think about New York mm -hmm. City and its boroughs being that densely populated by Iroquois people that they would actually do a mass like in the Mohawk language. It's just like kind of um, put chills <laughs> chills in me to know that I had like actually landed in this same neighborhood. I'm actually on the 16th floor right now of my hotel room. So I'm like, and it's this beautiful, like I'm at the standard hotel and it's like floor to ceiling windows. And I have like the most amazing view of the sky space. So it's like really incredible to have this like interview. Who, I mean, Gina Adams and Dishna Cause Vancouver, British Columbia, and Donjaba, Mingizi, and Dudum. I come to you today from the unceded territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, and the Stolo, where I've lived for the last year. I'm Gina Adams. I'm a contemporary hybrid visual artist, and thank you for being with us today. I have returned to my Ojibwe Moen and Anishinaabe roots through the language and through the creation of artwork. This treaty with the Seneca 1802, I created this just about a year ago. I wanted to really be able to talk about the history of the Seneca nation and how they were forced from New York state out into Wisconsin. It's hard to read because these documents were very duplicitous when they were created. They were made to be forcibly signed by people who didn't speak the language and they were only interpreting for the U.S. government. So it was very one-sided. It's a watercolor. It's graphite. It's a drawing on watercolor paper and then watercolor. So there's an above and below that signifies the heaven and the earth or the land and the sky or um, the waking state and the dream state. Mm -hmm. So what is below is the roots and the beauty and is connected to a work, body of work that I've done since 2002 called Lace Bead Heritage. I am painting beadwork and lace work, the work, the craft of my ancestors and bringing it into one. My name is Jeffrey Gibson. Um, I live in the Hudson Valley in New York, and I'm an artist. These editions were uh, made with my gallery, and they're a combination of digital prints and then screen prints, and also collage of additional screen printed elements on top. And then, of course, they're all in uh, unique colored frames. For probably about 10 years now, I've been playing with geometric abstraction and pattern. And um, that originated from me looking at different indigenous painting, historical painting, and um, just realizing that a lot of times pattern and color and shape um, in Western and American art is seen as purely formal. When you look at indigenous arts, oftentimes it's a way of 
identifying the person who either made it or the person who is um, who's wearing it, for instance, if it's on clothing or in beadwork or embroidery. And so it was really that uh, juxtaposition of sort of Western European modernism and abstraction with this other perspective of indigenous abstraction that I started with. And I oftentimes will appropriate texts from poetry, lyrics, literature, quotes, and then sometimes I author the text myself. Know Your Magic Baby is something that, um, I don't know, I guess it's just something that I would say to myself and then to people around me. The future is present is a phrase that I authored. If I ruled the world um, is a song lyric and um, I wanna give you devotion is also a song, song lyric. And then I Am A Rainbow 2 uh, was the title of a show of mine at Sycamore Jenkins in 2018. And that is from Bob Marley's The Sun Is Shining. So yeah, I think these are totally emblematic of, of what I do as an artist. Uh, hello, my name is Dwayne Slick. Uh, I'm a painter and I am in Providence, Rhode Island. And I'm from the Meskwaki Nation of Iowa. And my mother is from the Ho-Chunk Nation of Nebraska. In terms of like the two pieces in the show, uh, they're very similar in the sense that they're using silhouettes. Part of the initial idea was based on a video I had seen of a 1976 opera by Robert Wilson and Philip Glass called Einstein on the Beach, where it involves a kind of a non-linear narrative um, on the stage and like, like maybe like 15 moments or 15 areas of activity taking place simultaneously. Because in the oral traditions of native cultures, um, there's usually, there is always a story of a trickster who takes the form of the coyote, could be the rabbit, could be the crow. And in the arias, you know, for a, a coyote opera, I was in a residence in Santa Fe. I got to stay in this great adobe house by myself, um, surrounded by just, you know, wild plants. And there were a lot of coyotes out there. You could hear them at night. One day I looked out my bedroom window because I just saw into the, there's, I think it's called Chamisa plants. And there was a lone rabbit. And <laughs> it looked like it was praying. <laughs> and it looked so tense. And, you know, I knew that there's, you know, the coyotes are just everywhere out there. Um, and I think that was part of where this painting came from. Yeah, so my, my name is Meryl McMaster and um, I'm based in Ottawa, Canada. And uh, I'm a photographer. I use a lot of mixed media and performance, um, kind of sculptural based work. Two works that I have in the exhibition, um, Owl and Cougar uh, are from uh, a larger body of work I did uh, called Ancestral. The technique for this basically is that in a darkened room, um, uh, in, a, in a photo studio, I uh, digitally projected um, with a projector, uh, shone the uh, portraits of these animals onto uh, my father's uh, face. And I painted his face and his uh, kind of torso white to yeah. act as a screen, allowing the projection to appear uh, more clearly on his body. Um, and uh, yeah, so there was no Photoshop uh, used uh, to um, overlay the images. Kind of our awareness of, of our natural surroundings and how our, our kind of our human impact um, on the environment is kind of changing our surroundings so drastically um, that, um, yeah, my fear is kind of driving, you know, humans and animals um, basically to extinction and, and without our kind of immediate attention. Peter Emerson. I said, I give thanks that all of you are well. I give greetings. My, I'm a member of the Seneca Nation, but in our language, we call ourselves Onondawatga. It means the people of a great hill. Um, 
I said that in English, the name that I'm known by is Peter Jemison. So we'll use that for this uh, interview. Uh, I am a painter mainly. Um, I love to draw. Uh, and recently, uh, the work I've been doing, I've been using a lot of cut handmade paper. We have, a, we have a story of a man came from the northern shore of Lake Ontario. We call him the peacemaker. He traveled in a white stone canoe. And so this man, he was traveling with a message of peace, power, and righteousness. He came to us to help us to put aside killing and replace conflict using the power of rational thinking of using mind to communicate with each other because we all have the power of reason. So you should be able to talk to those that you consider your enemy. I did a whole series of paintings based on the shadows that are cast on the snow. You know, during winter, especially in the afternoon, when uh, after you've had a lot of snow and the ground covered in, in snow, cast on the snow create mm -hmm. beautiful linear designs and I was just so focused on those shadows and a lot of people respond to those so I, I've done a number of them. My name is Lizine Hill. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Eastern Band Cherokee and my name in Cherokee is pronounced Lushini Otalui. Um, I make large-scale installations, uh, conceptual installations uh, that focus on the loss of Native culture. And um, often I uh, address issues of violence against women, violence against Native women. And I also do drawings, abstract expressive drawings, and some artist books. The Pilgrimage Ribbon Accordion book is um, what is in the show tonight. And um, it's uh, one of two accordion books that were in um, a multimedia installation that I did several years ago, uh, primarily about the loss of native culture the book uh, is 11 panels, and when it is opened up uh, and displayed, uh, it's probably um, 12 feet wide, stretched out. Um, drawings are filled with a lot of negative space. So I, I got very interested in that just aesthetically. All right, so my name is Louis DeSoto. I'm a Cahuilla, born in Southern California in the San Bernardino Valley. And uh, I am now living in Napa, California. And I teach at San Francisco State University. Uh, so uh, that piece was made uh, as a drawing in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So I used the map of the world and I was thinking uh, a long time back about um, sort of intimate journeys that I've had with people across my life. Uh, and uh, what I did was I traced my travels along with the travels of a significant other or, you know, somebody I was close with. Uh, one of the arcs is myself. And then one of the arcs is a person that w I was intimate with in my life that I had some emotional connection with. And those were sort of the places, the origins where they came from, and then the place where we met, and then where we went from there. Let's put it this way. They, they look like a photograph that you would see using a large format camera. And, um, but below in the text box, it says how many minutes we are presumably looking at this picture. And what they actually represent is the beginning of a scan that I made with my camera where I'm standing and I'm holding my camera uh, with, with a large telephoto lens. And I'm actually taking little tiny bits of 
details of that whole scene. And then the whole scene is assembled. And so the first picture to the last picture is the amount of minutes it took to scan all the details in that image. And then they're assembled using software.